Okay, now this video is going to be an extension, okay, so you don't need to know this derivation. But I think it's nice to see how something that we've been using for a good amount of time, the cosine rule, could develop into something that is incredibly useful for working out the angles between two vectors in three dimensions. Okay, so what we've generally worked with for the cosine rule is a triangle, okay, where you've got this angle, and then you've got these sides, so A, B, and C, for example, okay? And the cosine rule said that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC, right, 2BC cos A, okay? So that was the cosine rule. Now, um, if we think about this as vectors now, so if we think about that as a vector and that as a vector, okay, let's change this to being A, so that's the vector A, that's the vector B, okay, so what is this, okay, what is this vector, okay, so that vector uh, you can write as B minus A. Okay, so that's what we have seen before. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to um, use this formula in order to now write um, a similar formula for a, a, enabling me to work out the angle between these two vectors, A and B. Okay, so... Um, First things first, if what we're going to do is we're going to define A um, to be A1, A2, A3, and let B be B1, B2, B3, okay? Um, and we also have that the length of A would be A1 squared plus A2 squared plus a3 squared, square rooted, and the length of b would be b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared, square rooted. Um, I could write down what uh, b minus a is. So b minus a is equal to b1 minus a1, b2 minus a2, b3 minus a3, and if I need to, I can also write down uh, what b minus a, the length of that is. Okay, so that's uh, b1 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus a2 squared plus b3 minus a3 squared, square rooted. Okay, so that, that kind of gives me everything that I need. So let's now put that into our formula, okay? So the a squared represented that side there, okay? So this length, the length of that side, is given by that. So we've got b minus a modded, okay? That's what the a squared represents. We've got the b squared, okay? Um, oh, sorry, that's squared. And then we've got the b squared, which was that one there, so the a, okay, so mod a squared. We've got c squared, okay, which was that b squared, minus 2. Now b is just the length of b, so mod b, um, yep, and then we've got, uh, let's say, sorry, mod a, and then mod b. And then we've got cos A. Okay? So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to rearrange it to get this bit. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that from both sides. I'm going to add that to both sides and divide by 2. Leaving with mod A 
uh, mod b, cos a is equal to one half of mod a squared plus mod b squared. Take away this mod b minus a squared. Okay. So, what I now want to do is I kind of want to expand that and put it into the component form. Okay, so what have you got up there? So what have we got? We've got mod a squared. It gets rid of the square root. So we're going to have a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. We've then got the mod b squared. So plus b1 squared, b2 squared and b3 squared. Then we're taking away this bit squared, okay? So taking away all of that. So let's expand the brackets out. We're going to have b1 squared. We're going to have two lots, so take away two lots of a1, b1. And we're going to have uh, the a squared as well, uh, so the a1 squared. So that's the first bracket expanded. I've got the second bracket, which is b2 squared, then take away two lots of a2, b2, and uh, plus a2 squared. And I've got the third bracket, which is b3 squared, uh, take away two, a3, b3, uh, plus a3 squared. Okay, so that's all of that bracket, and then this whole thing has a big bracket around the outside as well. So we've got a lot of terms there, which hopefully now will cancel down. Um, I've got this a1 squared here, okay, which is going to cancel with that, taking away the a1 squared there. So there you go. I've got an a2 squared here, okay, which is going to cancel with that a2 squared there. I've got this a3 squared here which is going to cancel with that one there. I've got b1 squared cancelling with that one. I've got b2 squared cancelling with that. And b3 squared cancelling with that. So the majority of the terms uh, disappear. Okay? And what I'm left with is I've got the half. So let's rewrite this. So we've got mod a, mod b, cos theta equals... We've still got the one half. Now we've got the minus, minus two. So, so we've got uh, two A1, B1, plus, because we've got the two minuses, uh, two A2, B2, and then plus two A3, B3. So you can see that that half and the twos are going to cancel. So we can get rid of all that. And so what we're left with is that mod a mod b cos theta is equal to a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3. Okay? And this is what we represent as the scalar product, which is a dotted with b. Okay? Otherwise referred to as the dot product. So that is when you multiply the top rows together, so A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus A3 times B3, okay? That is what that dot there accomplishes, that's what it does. So what we have is this formula where I can write cos theta is equal to A dot B over mod A mod B by dividing both sides by the mod A mod B. And that is the scalar product, okay? That will enable me to work out the angle between two vectors in two or three dimensions.